How do there guys, welcome back to Edgar TV for another Pro Tour Roundup, perfect for if you're on the go, at work, can't follow the tour or you just want to hear my opinion on the stories and have a chat about different things we do that down in the comments section first of all, thank you to everybody who did actually hit the subscribe button yesterday if you haven't done so, if you watch my videos all the time, just check, because there's a lot of people that watch the videos but don't realise they're not subscribed to the channel and I'm closing on 50,000 so if you don't mind just checking that out, that'd be much appreciated, but it's Pro Tour actually today the next big event the world match play that's what people are trying to get the points for but we're going to try and pick out those key stories first one for me daryl pilgrim one of the most unlucky players in the world because look at the averages he's been throwing this year three times he's been on 98 regularly in the sort of mid 90s these are all of his stats and he's lost every single game lost first round in all six pro tours and at the uk open as well those numbers and averages mean he is actually averaging better than a lot of players in the top 32 in the world but he just can't find a single win it's got to change somewhere for him it did change for Owen Roloffs today he getting his first victory on the PDC tour a 6-5 victory over Adam Hunt we are now with just two tour card holders looking for their first victory of the year that is Jacques Lab, who went down 6-5 to Ricardo Petretzko and Rob Grundy who also lost out to Andrew Gildin that was actually 6-3 I don't know why I wrote 6-5 on the slide it was 6-3. So Grundy and Lab still looking for results. These are the results for the first round of today. A few seeds going out. You can see Joe Cullen going out. And also uh, Brendan Dolan in the early bits. As we take a scroll through, you'll see a few more seeds. Like Peter Wright's gone out in the opening game today. Not able to back up for what he did yesterday. Mervyn King has his tour card in a spot of bother at the moment. It's looking likely at the minute he could lose that. So maybe we're going to see him on the seniors tour next year. Jean Van Veen seeded now. He going out to Bayer Van Peer, who's regularly picking up a few wins. Ian White, someone who's come up in conversation a lot in regards to will he lose his tour card. I think he's going to be safe. I really do. He had a decent year last year. He's having a good one again at the start of this year. I think Ian White's going to be safe, to be honest. Gary Anderson up and running again. Mid-90s for him. Ended up only just a 6-5 victory over Harpu Puhai, but... Still in the winner's enclosure. Klassen got his first win on the board yesterday. He's now doubled up and made it two. UK Open champion Dimitri Vandenberg again continuing to prove that he can play well on the stages but struggling on the floor. 6-1 loss to Kyvenhoven. Josh Rock sliding, isn't he? He's not getting the results at the minute. Now he's defending prize money as well. It's going to be a little bit trickier. He went down 6-4 to Rom Romeo. Alan Souter, someone who could do with a few wins on the board this year. He's another one of these players that are just in a spot of bother if things don't go right, considering he's in the top 32 shout not too long ago. It's how quick it can change in darts. He went down 6-4 to Russia. Monster there for William O'Connor, 109 average. Not surprised to see him pick up a comfortable victory. Jose de Souza, somebody else I think who is going to be on the slide. I wouldn't be surprised to see de Souza plummet through the rankings sort of as quick as he sort of came up through them i think de Souza could be arguably by the end of this year struggling for top 32 if not beyond of the star performers in the second round only three today own the 100 plus category ross smith having it over graham usher daryl gurney the star performer around 108 in his victory over kevin Doat, someone who's been playing very well recently and really drew some attention to himself after that game with michael smith at the world championship and dirt van divenboder i know a lot of people are going to be glad to see him back in the winner's circle but not just the winner's circle He's now starting to play some very good darts as well. 103.57 average for him. Be interesting to see if he can keep this going now. Does seem to be sort of getting over the issue. We did lose a lot of seeds in this round though as well. Aaron Rolls, who got his first victory of the year, then goes and takes out Stephen Muntin, the recent Masters champion. Connor Scott in this as a challenge tour invitation. He takes out Ricardo Pedretsko. I was just saying about Ian White doing better and then he lost to Van de Voort. A stupid spell checker. That's Van Der Voort. There might be a few more of them, maybe. I don't know. Ryan Searle started off the season extremely well this year, hasn't he? But not this weekend. Two second round defeats. He goes out to Chris Landman, the runner-up runner of the WDF World Championship. Andy Barton's won that one. He went out in the opening game to Leighton Bennett. So not good there for the WDF finalists. But a few seeds to fall at the last 64. 
Now, one of the things when you're playing on the Pro Tour that's quite tricky to do is to sort of back up a, a performance. If you have a really big sort of average, like one of those 108s, 109s, and then you've got to go do it again, it, it's sort of like everything doesn't feel as good, if you know what I mean. It's hard to explain, but you go from a game of hitting everything you want to hit and everything being so perfect to then, like, even if you hit 100, you're like, come on, and you need to do it on the Tour, as we see with some of these results and some of these averages you can't have five minutes off you literally got to be on it all the time and well if we look at who's been on it here there's some good interesting results here steve beaton getting to the board finals a good result for him he'd probably be disappointed losing out 6-4 to settle check only averaging 84 but again we'd like to see steve beaton back at the alessandra palace due to the fact it's his last year on the professional ranks this year so it'd be great to see him keep picking up these victories gary anderson still picking up wins again he's through to the last 16 he's on some fantastic form isn't he at the moment will be good to see him actually pick up a tv title i think he's not far away from it Tom Taylor, someone I'm hearing a lot of very good things about. A lot of people expecting big things of him. Maybe it's going to start coming today. But Danny Jansen, another player we picked up on yesterday, saying about how, like, when you not defending money like he was with in regards to defending his tour card and when you're not worried about tour cards and when you're winning in other rooms like he's done recently at the Super Series and the Challenge Tour. I mean, he's just beat yesterday's winner, Barnevel 6-5. He's in the last 16 again. Danny Anson having a fantastic season this season. Devon Divenboda backing it up. Good to see 104, but it looks like he's back to form now. So no longer is he going to be someone that I think is dismissed or someone people would like to play because this is getting regular now that he's having those good averages and is into the last 16 as well as is Connor Scott call up from the challenge draw making the most of his opportunity two and a half thousand pounds so far now there are a couple of stories in the last 16 that stand out but the one that's most important if you look on the darts connect it'll say wf that is win and forfeit let me show you on the Martin Schindler versus Gary Anderson game now this was actually on a streaming board and what's happened here is Gary Anderson at three all I mean, he was suffering with a bit of a shoulder issue throughout the game, but at 3-all, decided he couldn't continue no more, and he gave Martin Schindler the win. So it wasn't like he was miles behind at the time. Suffering with shoulder, so concerns there. There's a lot of darts coming up. Maybe he's just going to rest it a little bit and maybe concentrate on things like the match play and those big senior events, but a bit of a concern over Gary Anderson at the moment, who had to withdraw from his game with Martin Schindler. No concerns for Chizzy. 112 monstrous average there over Dom Taylor, who did hang in there well. Well, 101 so maybe that's why there's a lot of talk about Dom Taylor at the moment but a lot of seeds crashing out challenge tour call up Connor Scott taking out Johnny Clayton Michael Van Gerwen going out to Daryl Gurney again around the 100 average continuing to build on the form he has had for the last year but this is the story for me Danny Jansen's done it again He's done it again, 100 average, defying 103 average of Damon Hetter it's amazing what a little bit of freedom in your game can do for you isn't it now, because Danny Jansen doesn't have a tour card, doesn't mean that he can't get the benefits, such as the Players' Championship Finals, World Championships, all those sort of things. It just means he relies on withdrawals to be able to play in the event. But he's making most of it. Another £3,500 on his order of merit from this event. Now, he does need to make the top 64 to keep it. This was exactly the same with like Luke Littler or Scott Williams, who have got in the top 64 and kept hold of that prize money. If he doesn't get the top 64, he gets zeroed again and back to Q school. Or he'll probably get it for the challenge tour order of merit. But it just goes to show what winning can do. Connor Scott also going out at this round. He goes out 6-0 to Daryl Gurney. The semi-finals has also played. I missed the little link between the two. So we can pick up on some of the results as we go. We know the final's going to be Dirk against Chizzy. Dirk van Dijvenboda has been through a horrid time of things recently. And at one point, I remember not too long ago, we played Ryan Searle in the... Uh, the Masters, wasn't it, at Milton Keynes. And everyone sort of dismissed Dirk van Dijvenboda as it's going to be an easy win for Ryan Searle. Well, it, it, he's not anymore, is he? Again, up at that sort of mid to high uh, 90s, around the 90s, 100 mark. Really good day for him. It'll be interesting to see if he can go over the line and make it double Dutch following in the footsteps of Barnevelde, who won yesterday. But... Some real, real interesting runs there. People like Sedlicek, who's looking at defending cards. People like Schindler, who needs to pick up some ranking money to secure his positions. So, always an interesting one when it goes over to Germany. But on this occasion, it's not for the same sort of reasons. Because normally, the, the top players haven't travelled over there. So, you've Gerwins, Andersons, uh, Price, who hasn't gone. But, and maybe going midweek, this might be like 
a way that they're supporting the tour a little bit more now. But, I mean, it's Tuesday already. They've got to be back for media tomorrow, like Van Gerwen, Peter Wright. So they're going to have to fly back, do media for the Premier League, and, yeah, busy times. The final did go the way of Dave Chisnell. Dirt Van Diver had darts, though, to take it to 7 all. He lost the game 8-6. Should you get in over the line for the 17th time on a PDC Pro Tour event? The first one in 2011, back in Crawley, when he first started on the PDC. So winning titles pretty much in every year of his PDC career. Three Euro Tour titles last year. So it makes you wonder, is 2024 going to be the year that Dave Chisnell wins a TV title? If you think it is... Down in the comments section, let me know. But we'll have a quick look at the next TV title. This is the World Match Play. You'll see here a couple of people you'll probably be glad to see. A lot of people are glad to see the likes of Barneveld, Wade, Anderson, currently in those provisional qualifying spaces. But Josh Rock, he, he's not getting wins. I think he's safe here. He, he's got 40,000. He's 9,000 clear. They'd all need to jump him. I think he's going to be safe. I don't think there's enough time to catch him. But there's going to be some concerning signs here for Josh Rock potentially a couple of people just sat just outside the qualifying places that are interesting as well we know that people like Menzies are playing well Luke Woodhouse Jose de Souza someone I've already said there are a few concerns for if he starts missing events like the match play he's going to lose big chunks of money currently not in a qualifying place to get into that event either and then there's quite a sizable gap at the moment from a few players um, Ian White though is one of those players not terribly far away 31st place needs to get in the top 16 in order to get into that but this is the one that's interesting as well the tour card race so currently with all money considered people that are going to win and lose money at the end of this year look at some of the names who potentially could lose cards king suter Suljevic, van der voort just to name a few and you'll pick out a couple more names as i go through but the one that really stands out adrian lewis and at the moment there seems to be no sign that adrian lewis wants to come back and start playing on the pro tour again so and i've also just noticed that says event five and it's not event five it's event number six so, and i'm not going to re-record this whole video that i've been filming all day so yeah uh, it's actually event six so if you did notice that and you've already spammed me in the comment section and lucky because i've noticed it at the end but yeah thanks for watching guys and I will be covering the next load of Pro Tours. They're coming up in a few weeks' time. They're going to be in Leicester. And then I'm commentating on the ones 9 and 10. So there might not be some for 9 and 10. But I'm going to cover these for the rest of the year anyway, right here on Edgar TV. So make sure you are subscribed. And let me know down in the comment section what stories are standing out for you right now. Because I'd love to discuss them on future videos. Catch you soon with some more Edgar TV.